All right, uh, this is going to be a video that describes um, how to use linear models of bivariate data to uh, make predictions about that data. Um, and so we'll go ahead and take a few notes, and then I'll show you two examples. Um, linear models of bivariate data is the topic that we're talking about. And then the major idea here, the essential question is, how can I use slope and y-intercept to make predictions uh, for real-world data? Um, and so the first question, the first sub-question we're going to look at is what is a line of best fit? Because that's going to be really important to us. All of the data we're going to look at in this topic um, follows some kind of linear trend. And so um, that means there's a pattern that you could identify as a straight line. And so a line of best fit shows the linear trend of a set of two variable, and two variable is the same as bivariate data. Um, and so I've got an example here drawn for you. Um, if you've got this set of data uh, that we're looking at, um, I think I can draw them up. Okay. if I have this set of data um, and I'm looking at that and I draw this red trend line in, um, that line of best fit goes through the data at the angle of the trend. And so you can see it's kind of in the data, um, so it's in the right position, but it also uh, follows what we would say the trend of the data is, um, which is to say that it moves up and to the right at, the, at a particular angle. Um, which you guys might remember as slope. Um, the second question we'll look at, and you can pause this at any time in order to take these notes, how can I use a line of best fit to make predictions graphically? Um, and so if I'm talking about making it graphically, that means that um, I've got a set of data, and you can see my data there, it's in black, and then I've drawn in a line of best fit. So I would recommend right now pausing and recreating this almost exactly um, so that you can have an example. Um, try to put the dots in relatively the same position. Make sure you label the axes as I have. So again, pause or rewind if you need to. Um, there's a couple of steps you have to take. First, um, you have to identify, identify the value on the x-axis for which you're making a prediction. Second, you go straight up until you reach the line. In some cases, it's down. Um, you go straight up or down until you reach the line of best fit. And then three is go straight to the y-axis and read. And so let's look at an example. Let's say we need to, for this data, predict y for an x of 50. Um, so I look at my graph here. And at this point, you may want to use a highlighter or a marker or a pencil of a different color. I go to first the x value of 50, which is right here. And then I'm going to go straight up until I hit the uh, line of best fit. So I'm done with the second one. And now I go to the left, back to the y-axis, straight across, and I can see that my prediction should be something like 4.6. Um, and so I can say 4.6, y equals 4.6 if x equals 50. Um, and so my prediction there would be y equals 4.6. All I did was I went up from an x of 50, hit the line of best fit, and went over to the left until I reach the y-axis, and then just read. It's about 4.6. Um, all right, let's keep moving. Um, how can I use a line of best fit algebraically? Um, that means that sometimes uh, the line that you draw, um, you'll be asked to make a prediction for something that is not shown nicely by the graph. Um, and so uh, the first thing you need to do is find the slope for the line of best fit. And I'm going to go over an example here in just a moment. Second, you're going to find the y-intercept if possible. You can't always do that. And then third, you're going to use the line or ratios to find a prediction. Um, and so uh, when I say that, you're going to have to do some ratios work using the slope, or you're going to have to find uh, the equation of the line and then just plug in x and calculate for y. Um, so let's look at a couple of examples here. Um, so let's... Look at Shira's math test, included a survey question asking how many hours students had spent studying for the test. The graph below shows the relationship between how many hours students spent studying and their score on the test. So when we're looking at this, um, I would really suggest um, you can use the scratch pad, but your iPads will allow you to write in Expo. Expo marker is pretty nice for these. You can draw right onto the screen. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place the line of best fit. And so uh, I've got my marker ready here, and I'm going to kind of place it right whoops, there. And so I've got my line of best fit, and then it says, estimate the score a student could expect if they didn't study at all. 
I'm going to note that that's zero hours of studying. And so zero hours of studying is on the graph, so I can make this prediction algebraically and extend my line back. Um, make this prediction algebraically. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is maybe my line of best fit is a little bit too high, um, and so uh, I might erase that, and or I think I can just move it down a little bit. I think maybe this is a little bit more accurate because now it's kind of in the right position. Um, so I'm looking at this, and I need to first find an x of. Oops, let me go back. An x of zero. And so that's right here. And so I'm going to go straight up from there. I hit my line. It, the line is about 41 or 40 uh, at that spot um, on the y-axis. And so I can put that answer in, which if I can find my mouse, there it is. Um, it likes it. Um, and so that's sort of how you do it graphically. Let's go ahead and look at an example um, where we can't do it graphically. So um, let me scroll up so we can read the situation here. Uh, this graph shows the average temperature of the world in degrees Celsius as a function of the number of years since 1970. Um, and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place a line of best fit. It appears that it kind of goes right there. It's in a good position. It's in the middle of the data. Seems like it's at the right angle for the data, so I'm going to be okay with it. Um, if the trend in the data continues, choose the best estimate for the average temperature of the, temperature of the world in 2030. Um, so uh, what I'm going to notice first is that an X of 40 is... 2010. Uh, and so I need to add 20 more years. Um, and that is not on the graph. So I can't solve this one algebraically because it would be way out here on the graph somewhere. Um, and so I'm going to um, do a little bit of algebraic work. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to find the slope of my line of best fit. To do that, I need to identify uh, two points on the line. So I'm going to use this point right here, whose x value is 10. And you can write this on your desk when you're doing this on your iPad. And its y value is, I'm looking here, it's 14.1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I think the y value is about 14.15. You have to be pretty precise on these. So um, please take the time to be precise. Um, it might be a little bit less than that, I think. Uh, let's let's call it 14.1 um, just to be safe. Um, and then I'll find it doesn't matter what other point is need a second point. Um, this one looks like it's pretty clear. Notice that I'm picking clear X's. Um, so that is 40 comma and then I have a Y value of 14.65. Uh, and so um, I'm going to use the stacking method that we learned last semester. Um, in order to find the slope, I'm going to find the change in x is plus 30. The change in y is the 14s don't change, but it goes up um, from 1, 0 to 0.65. So that's a plus 0.55. Um, so I have plus 0.55, and now I'm going to divide the change in y divided by the change in x, so the rise divided by the run, is 0.55 divided by 30. And so um, on these, you're welcome to use a calculator. I'm going to get my calculator and do that calculation. Um, so I have 0.55 divided by 30, and I get the fraction 11 over 600, which is terrible, where I get 0.0183 repeating. Um, so there's my slope. Um, I've done the first step. Now I need to make a prediction for uh, an x of 60. Um, at this point, you might be thinking to yourself, this is doing too much, but get over it. 
Um, I'm going to notice that the y-intercept here is something like uh, 13.95. And so that tells me that my, my line of best fit actually has the equation y equals 0 0.018, 0 0.083 repeating x plus 13.95. And so I'm going to use that uh, to make a prediction for 60. So I'll do 0 0.0183 repeating times 60 plus 13.95. And the y that I get when I do that calculation should be a good estimate of the temperature at that time, and I get y equals 15.05 degrees. Um, okay, and so now I'm going to look at my answers over here. Um, so there can be a little bit of variability in terms of your answer and what Khan Academy thinks the answer should be, um, but I can be relatively sure that it should be very close to 15.05, so I'm going to pick the answer that is closest to that which in this case is 14.9 degrees, uh, which I'm having trouble selecting. And it likes it. Um, so I just picked the one that's closest to that. And that's an example of where you'd have to use uh, some algebra to figure out, but it is all algebra stuff that you guys have done last semester. It's just slope and y-intercept and then plugging in to find a y. Um, so if you need help with it, make sure you show me the notes beforehand. Um, I also need for you to be conscientious uh, when you are uh, doing your summary here. Um, and so when you summarize, make sure that you pick a few of the most important ideas um, from these notes and then try to summarize it in two or three sentences um, so that you can have a better chance of remembering it in the long run. Uh, good luck.